but the executive part of this Constitution is a lot quicker and a lot, a lot shorter than the uh, Article 3. What does Article 3 cover, guys? Judicial. What does judicial mean? The police force? You mean the national police forces and take away all our guns and, and put the, put the uh, tanks in the, in the courtyard and kill us all? No. Does America have a national police force? No. No. So what is uh, Article What is Article 3 for? The justice system. The justice system, right? The judicial branch, okay? Setting up the powers of the uh, Supreme Court, uh, providing for all the other federal courts. Uh, and again, this is really, really unusual, guys. These three sections of the government that have the checks and balances on each other is truly what makes America different from every other country in the world. Um, 308, look how short Article 3 is. How long is Article 3? Just one, two, three, da da da. Here's a question. I want to get in the Supreme Court. Now, that goes even talk of uh, ex President Clinton being on the Supreme Court. And that has happened. The President has, you know, done his time and gone on to be on the Supreme Court. Actually, I can't remember his name to say my name. But the President could do that. How long are you appointed to be on the Supreme Court? First of, well, first of all, how long are senators elected for? Senators. Six years. Right? Good job. Six years. Okay, what about congressmen? You're only eight. I think it's senator. What did you say, Connect Prayer? I thought it was for life. No, no. Senators are six years. Congressman, House of Representative, for how long? How long? Two years. Two years. Yep, they're, they're running all the time. So now, let's say I want to be a Supreme Court of the United States. How long are you elected for and appointed for there? When do you have to quit? Life. I mean life. And they very rarely quit. Except Sandra Day O'Connor, Arizona's very famous uh, female appointee. She did quit for her family's uh, consideration. But basically, the Supreme Court judges are there for their entire life. That is a fact. That's kind of a rather important thing because what, who determines what the Constitution means? Supreme Court. Yeah. Supreme Court. So let's say you put a bunch of, uh, of uh, liberals on the Supreme Court. How long is that going to change the liberal interpretation of the Constitution? 180 years. <laughs> well, it's going to take until they uh, take until they die, right? But that, that's the direction it'll take. Like this. Yes, sir. Which, uh, what position was Brunel's dad? That's State Supreme Court. Uh, Arizona State, State, State Federal Supreme, Supreme Court. Court. We have a uh, former cadet who's, whose dad is on the Arizona State Supreme Court. Could that person get into the Federal Supreme Court? Yes, sir. You could, but actually that's the state laws. Usually the people who go up to the Federal Supreme Court are on the Federal Courts. Uh, is, what, is how that generally works, but you can appoint anybody you want to. When they're appointed to the Supreme Court, how many justices are on the Supreme Court? Two. Two? Seven. And thank you very much. Try again. Nine. Nine. Seven. 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 Six. Anybody take it? Here, read. Read your. Uh, read your An article. An odd number. That's pretty good. That's that's. I like that. You got a 50% chance of <coughs> It's interesting that the actual article does not specify, does it? No. Read it. <laughs> when President Bush had an election with Al Gore, and it basically ended up in a tie, a national election, it came down to just a few thousand votes in Florida. That, the, uh, that would have been Democratic votes because they were Southern Florida people. Uh, but the Democratic Party uh, wanted to count those votes, and the Republican Party did not want to. And so that actual uh, argument went to the United States Supreme Court. And 
in that Supreme Court decision, Bush versus Gore, uh, they voted against allowing the votes to count. And on the Supreme Court, guess what? They were five Republicans and four Democrats. So the, the United States Supreme Court chose to throw out votes of American citizens to allow a Republican president be elected. And, uh, and Vice President Gore, who was running for presidency, lost. And I am quite, quite sure that he would have won if everybody's voted counted. But that's America. Love it or leave it. You know, you can sit there and complain about it, whine about it all you want. But uh, it's no different than when we had the last presidential election here. And prior to the presidential election, I did a survey with my students. And uh, how many people do you think in, out of my cadets would vote for uh, President Obama versus who do you run against this time? Romney. Romney. Yeah, Mr. Romney. Governor Romney. What do you think that was the vote? Romney. Eighty-seven percent for Romney, right? Because this is a Republican, Republican bastion. But did he win presidency by eighty-seven percent? No, he lost. So what does that tell you about Prescott? We are not an accurate representation of the United States. Prescott is not a representation of the United States. We are abnormal. <laughs> Just like, uh, just like on the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court, it depends on who is, uh, right now, there's more conservatives on the Supreme Court than liberals. And uh, consequently, the Supreme Court is making generally more conservative decisions. So all these are the checks and balances. So it, it, what's so crazy is to think of the Supreme Court making the decision who's going to be president. And that really did happen. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, I heard that the presidency came close, not, not like within a few votes, but it came it was within the statistical improbability. You could not tell who won. And I'm telling you, it came down to a few thousand votes in Florida, which were probably Democratic. No, I'm saying it's in this, this most recent election. The least recent election was a sneer. What are you talking about? It wasn't that close. It wasn't close at all. No. Obama killed uh, Romney. No. And he's not even close. No. Mitt Romney no. thought he was a win because he had poor advice. But, uh, President Obama had a very organized election, and they won in the critical states. It was a sphere. Uh, okay, Article 4. Here we go. This is exactly what I was talking about. The, the federal courts and the state courts. Okay? When you have a federal, uh, federal law, give me an example of a federal law. What's a federal law? No running days. No robbing banks, no killing. No, those are pretty federal. You know, tax evasion when you're paying your federal taxes and you cheat. No counterfeiting money. Oh my gosh, that will be very great. That's FBI impersonating stuff. Impersonating an officer. Say what now? Impersonating an officer. Impersonating an officer. That's a federal law. You and I'll tell you. <laughs> we have time. I, because of my cadets, <laughs> I took one of my uh, cadets. Uh, one year, I had a space and astronomy class, and I took my cadets on a field trip to Vandenberg Air Force Base, which is above Los Angeles. It's the western spaceport of America, and we went there to see a rocket launch. It did not launch, so I had an extra day. It was canceled because of tech, uh, tech, uh, technical difficulties. So I had an extra day. Not, what am I going to do? I was going to see a rocket launch. So I went to the uh, public affairs, and I was a colonel, and they oh, why don't you take your cadets out to uh, swim? So we chose to take our cadets out to swim to a beach. And uh, the beach was on a very huge area of protected seashore around this Air Force Base in California. And we walked down to the beach, and it said the western snowy plover a seabird was nesting here. And I said, no problem. And they actually had, you know, fenced off areas where the bird was, was nesting. It was no big deal. It was low, low tide. So my cadets went out and played football on the low tide. It was fun. And I walked down to the right. Sergeant Martinez, the old, uh, 
the older gentleman. Senior Master you know, Senior Master Martinez, he started up the ROTC with me. He was playing football, and all of a sudden we came back, and I saw a Humvee on the beach with guns pointed at my students. And I was thinking to myself, this might not be a good situation. So, uh, so I went down there and found out that the actual details of the uh, protected area extended down to the low water mark. It was not just in the sand dunes. And so therefore my cadets were playing football, even though they were playing it in a place that is underwater half the time, it was invading the western snowy plovers uh, nesting, ground. nesting grounds. Wow, I remember that. And guess what? You. That was not a state <laughs> law. That was a federal, federal law that we all that. broke. And so, uh, <laughs> so the, it was pretty important that they were arresting a colonel. And so they came up to me and I said, you know, I can't have my cadets arrested. So I went up to the uh, general in charge of the base. I said, sir, you need to arrest me and you need to arrest Sergeant Martinez. As he said, we've got to arrest somebody. I go, I'd rather have us arrested than 38 <laughs> cadets from uh, Prescott, Arizona. A lot of them never even seen, you know, the Pacific Ocean. They're having a good time. But uh, the bottom line is, Sergeant Martinez, I got a ticket. I still have a ticket actually in my office. But it was a federal law that we had broken. And so just like the, uh, just like the slide here, Sergeant Martinez, I had to go to a federal court in Santa Barbara, California, and pay a $215 fine, and we were found guilty of violating a federal uh, western snowy plover <coughs> endangered species mating habitat. So I have a, I have a ticket that I'm guilty for. Yes, sir. Uh, didn't you get off a little easy because one of the students was allergic to the birds? No, that was a good internet hoax, but I didn't get off easy at all. Matter of fact, I had to take a day off of work just to drive over there to go to the federal court. I couldn't go to it. Uh, we did have, at the same time we were being arrested, or, or issued the ticket, we had one of our students had an anaphylactic response because they were allergic to something on the uh, beach. So we had an ambulance come up at the same time, and I had to go to the uh, hospital and Sorry, Martinez had to stay there and give a pizza party to everybody to keep him happy. So, yes, it was a pretty miserable time. I didn't get off very easy, I tell you what. It probably cost me another 500 bucks just to uh, save my cadets from being uh, arrested. Yes, sir. Was it, a, was it on the news? No, I didn't want it to be on the news. I call up the uh, principal, though. You know, bad news never gets better with age, right? So I called up the principal from the, from the uh, Ms. McCrayley, from the hospital, I said, you want to hear the good news first? You want to hear the bad news? <laughs> and I said, the good news is I do not have 38 uh, students arrested. The bad news, I have, you know, I, uh, two, uh, two, uh, two, two adults arrested. And oh, by the way, the guy that had the anaphylactic response and almost died didn't. He's okay. <laughs> Who was he, sir? Who was the comic? Yeah, <laughs> Kenneth can can McConnell. I have to go <laughs> You know what happened really? Is he had never been to the beach. He was on the beach and he had this, I mean, he blew up like a cauliflower. Uh, but the rest of the story, and he didn't mind me telling you this, is, you know, next year he was, he was one of our commanders or whatever. He had another, he, he got allergic the next time. I go, well, we're not at the beach. He ended up being some kind of, uh, like you guys do, teenage gel or something that you put in your hair. And when it sweated, re sweat. It came down in his eyes, and there was a specific chemical in that gel that he was completely, horribly allergic to. And uh, it took him about a year and a half to figure that out. But it was pretty miserable for me, I promise. So I know all about federal courts, and it is uh, not fun. Yes, sir? How long were you guys playing football there? Like half an hour? Yeah, half an hour, enough of the sirens to go off and the hummers to show up. <laughs> and uh, that was not... A day I don't want to repeat on oh, the field trip. Wow. That was, uh, it was, so I know all about <laughs> yeah. federal courts. What kind of state courts, what kind of state laws do you get in trouble with? Theft. 
breaking the internet. We have kids who go to the state laws, all the state courts here all the time, but they're immature kids. And let's say you're here in Arizona and you get breaking and entering or shoplifting, right? We have kids all the time that are dumb and shoplift. Gee, all right, I'm going to leave Arizona because I fell in love with a girl from California, uh, Georgia. And I go to Georgia and I'm applying for a job in Georgia. It says, have you ever been arrested for anything other than a minor speeding ticket? Do you have to admit it? Yes, sir. You better admit it because mm -hmm. you've been legally arrested in a state. All these computers talk to each other. And I promise you, in Georgia, you guys go, well, you ever arrested in Arizona? Oh, but sir, what a big deal. It was just shoplifting, you know, breaking in. My buddy did it. I didn't do it. Boom, gone. Yes, sir. Isn't shoplifting a minor crime, though? It's called arrested. What's the difference between a minor crime and a major crime when you're trying to get hired and the guy's checking to see if you're honest? If you've been... If you've ever been arrested been for issued, anything other than speeding, well, that's what you need to fess up. Summons by a up. state or federal court, whether it be you're guilty or not guilty, you're, it's you're, a fact. you're labeled as arrested. You, it'll, even, oh, you, if it's you a, it'll follow you the rest of your life. I told you, you guys... Been, if you've been declared innocent, though, they don't exonerate you. I was 22 years old, and I got arrested for reckless driving because I was weaving in my lane trying to put a cassette into my my record player and uh, I was stopped at midnight with my uh, girlfriend a friend who was dressed up with into a fancy prom and they thought I was drunk and they had me do all the sobriety tests I was I had not drink but I was weaving in my lane and so I I have been arrested for reckless driving and to this day I'm 52 years old. I still have to admit that on every application I ever did. So you need to fess up and be honest. If you've ever had any problems, we'll stick with you. We're going to knock it off right here and finish up with uh, Article 4 and 5 and 6 the next time. Cadet Haslam, why don't you come up here and uh, dismiss your, your class. Probably so, yes. Flight! Okay. Button! Hunt! Dismissed. Go do great things!